guys welcome yeah so in example zero on a corresponding video in calculus two we first introduced the delta epsilon limit definition but there for a function of a single variable f of x and here in this video and the next five so a total of six examples we're going to look at delta epsilon limits for a function of two variables f of x comma y now the definition in calc 2 is very similar to the definition here um, that is the delta epsilon limit definition for uh, a function of a single variable and that of a function of two variables are analogous and in fact the only change as you'll see is the change that has to necessarily come in going from a function of a single variable to that of two variables here yeah okay cool 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 so with that said let's start so let f be a function of two variables that is f of x comma y and here let me uh, quickly interject with something that might help you um, understand this video better which is well isn't that the whole point of video tutorials okay okay which is this um, which is and uh and uh single variable functions we have y equals f of x so we have a y axis and an x axis and the inputs came from the x axis and in fact the set of inputs that are allowed which we call domains are usually an interval along the x-axis that is they are a portion of the x-axis and so that domain along the x-axis is mapped by f onto the vertical axis or the y-axis so we have y equals f of x what we have here when we have f of x comma y is instead the domain is somewhere in the xy plane so the entire xy plane is permissible as a domain for f of x comma y but uh, the domain is some region in the xy plane and the inputs are not just x when we have f of x comma y the inputs are ordered pairs x comma y and those inputs are mapped by f onto the vertical axis which is this time the z axis so instead of y equals f of x we have z equals f of x comma y so that's really the main distinction and the two delta epsilon limit definitions for 2d versus 3d now um, as I said, f has some domain d and the xy plane, and let's get some visual that's going to help us. So here's the domain d, which is a quarter circle. Uh, the domain d might be more interesting than this, but clearly you can see the domain d is in the xy plane, so it's this quarter cir circular region in the xy plane that we're calling our domain d. And we have a surface here uh, in the first octant that uh, is a mapping right of this domain d by f right and so for example the point a b in the domain d is mapped by f onto this point on the surface which corresponds to the z value l right so z equals f of a b is equal to l right and so just as we did in calc 2 what we want to say is the limit of f of x comma y this time is x comma y goes to a b is equal to l that's what we want to say but since we're talking about delta epsilon limit definition here uh, well we have to make that more rigorous and so just as it was in calc 2 it's still an epsilon challenge so I give you some arbitrarily small positive number epsilon no matter how small um, I give you some positive uh, small number epsilon right and what you do is you create an epsilon neighborhood about L in this manner so uh, the epsilon neighborhood is still an interval but this time along the z-axis as opposed to the y-axis in calc 2 right but yeah the epsilon neighborhood is still an interval the main difference is the delta neighborhood is no longer an interval which it was in calc 2 the delta neighborhood this time is a circular region centered at a b a small circular region i might add right okay and that's because well when you have an interval along the x-axis and you have a point a and you're approaching a along the x-axis well you have the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta um, and that's sufficient to define that interval but here we wanted to find a circle so you'll see in the delta epsilon limit definition sorry guys the delta epsilon limit definition for f of x comma y you'll see that uh, the delta is going to have to be constrained by something that has to do with the distance formula or a circle um, yeah okay cool otherwise uh, the two definitions are very similar and so so uh, just to tidy up um, it's still an epsilon challenge because well 
by giving me some arbitrarily small positive number epsilon, you've created this epsilon neighborhood about um, L along the z-axis. And so you've given me this challenge of finding a corresponding delta uh, in my domain D um, so that so that a delta neighborhood about AB has all X's being mapped into the epsilon neighborhood about L. So again, the only difference is that the delta neighborhood this time is a circular region. And um, yeah, so let's move on. And um, very important that D has points arbitrarily close to AB. So like there are X comma Y pairs all over D and we need some of those to be arbitrarily close to AB, right? So uh, with this, we say that the limit of f of x as x comma y approaches a b is l and we write this which shouldn't come as a surprise and here's the formal definition if for every epsilon greater than zero we're able to find a corresponding delta greater than zero such that such that whenever uh the distance uh between x comma y and a b is less than delta that's what this is saying the distance between uh, x comma y any x comma y in d and a b right that distance has to be less than delta so whenever this is true we need to immediately follow that the distance between um, f of x comma y and l is less than epsilon yeah now this part here right which is really the main difference um and the uh 2D versus 3D delta epsilon limit definition, right? This part here can be understood, one, as the equation of a circle. If you turn this less than into an equal and square both sides, then you have a circle centered at AB with radius delta. So that's one way to understand it. But another way to understand it is um, through the distance formula. Because remember, the distance formula said that the distance between x1, uh, y1, and x2, y2 is this. So if you choose x1, y1 to be a, b, and uh, x2, y2 to be some generic x, comma, y, and d, then this says that the distance between um, a, b, and x, comma, y, this here, and has to be less than delta, right? Good, defining our delta neighborhood. Okay, cool. Now, beyond this example zero, as I said, we're going to have five additional examples where example five is actually a bonus example, and they're going to get pretty difficult uh, very quickly. So all of them are very different and will benefit you greatly if you watch all of them. But um, before I move on, what I want to say is in those practical examples one through five, when the limit does exist, you'll want to make use of this restriction on delta. That is, uh, when the limit exists and you're writing a delta epsilon limit proof for a function of two variables, there will be a place where this here, the restriction on delta, will play a vital role in helping you make progress in your proof. You'll see that in examples two through five. Yeah? Okay, cool. So there's that, that heads up about making use of uh, this delta restriction in your proofs. Um, and then another heads up is uh, notice that for a function of a single variable, since we're approaching some x value equal to a, and that x value is clearly uh, on the x axis, we can only go to x equals a from the left or from the right. In other words, in order for us to make sure that the limit did exist in uh, a single variable calculus, what we had to do is check that the limit from the left was equal to the limit from the right. That was all. But notice that here, uh, the point AB can be approached not just from the left and from the right, but from infinitely many directions. For example, we can approach AB along the line y equals x, which would be this line, or we can approach AB along the parabola y equals x squared. Uh, I missed AB there, <laughs> but you get it, you get it. Or we can approach AB on the parabola x equals y squared, right? Like here. So that's very important. We could also uh, approach um, AB along um, x equals a, right? So, so or um, y equals b, right? So like there are infinitely many uh, lines from which we can approach a, b. That's crucial. So like you can't just check if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. It's not as simple as um, 
single variable calculus now. Life is more complicated. Um, no, just kidding. Okay, all right. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching. Um, again, examples one through five, super fun. Uh, take care.